you know, really just looking back on it, taking a moment here to look back on it, how it all did really occur. Um, I, w I was in the corporate world and, um, you know, I experienced life to the fullest uh, in every which way. Um, uh, going internally, but still being very attracted to the external world. And uh, right before I came here, a lot of family members uh, were passing, uh, dropping their bodies. And um, it was like, it changed me somehow. I started, what am I doing? What am I doing? And I remember sitting in Raleigh um, going, a miracle's got to happen or I'm ready to check off the planet. I'm pretty much done. <laughs> and uh, Kirsten and Jason came to Raleigh at that time and I got that message through an email because I was involved with the course for many years and I hadn't been going to the classes but I still have been practicing. And when I got the email, it said there's a young couple coming from Australia to talk about listening to the voice for God. And immediately it's like, gotta go. And so I went and uh, that was my miracle because there was such a, um, it was, they were speaking to the real of my heart because I was trying to really practice listening to the spirit in the external world, but there was m way many um, distractions. And so they said that there was gonna be a retreat in Kentucky and um, immediately I heard, oh, you just gotta go, you know? So I went and um, about three or four months later, I ended up um, really, my life as I knew it was lifted out of Raleigh, North Carolina and into Cincinnati. And I had several properties at that time and the economic situation was not really good and everybody thought I was pretty crazy. And, uh, you know, I went into work and I said, well, the Lord's calling, I gotta go and pretty much gave my notice and um, put up the houses for sale. And, you know, everybody said, you're never going to sell these things. What are you doing? And uh, I just had to listen to what I was getting and I put them up for sale and um, they sold just like that, um, both of them. So I was getting witness to uh, everything was unfolding like with ease and simplicity. And, um, and yeah, it was like just being carried. We were all coming across the countries from different parts of the world, all coming together and it was like a big boom, you know? <laughs> I met Suzanne at the Peace House with her feet pajamas and <laughs> we looked at each other for the first time going, oh, <laughs> hello. <laughs> <laughs> and um, but the devotion was so deep we there it was an unspoken um, we knew it was our time and so uh, yeah and pretty much boom here here we are and it really seemed to happen so quickly in the blink of an eye um, and letting go of the world as I knew it was very easy for me. Um, <laughs> the hard part was living in community. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, because the, the, I always felt I always wanted to collaborate and really join with my brothers and sisters, right? And in the corporate world, I was always like, hmm, nobody wants to you know, collaborate. But really, when I came into community, I didn't realize that it was me that 
desired the collaboration, but I had too many insecurities and uh, lack of worth and all that stuff. So when you come and live in community and are each other's reflection, you get to see uh, your mind. And um, <laughs> so I had been watching my mind for many years, but not like this. I mean, this is like 24-7. At first, when I came, I was watching my mind, yeah, but haphazardly. I was sort of like living my life here as I would in the world, right? And then it was like, hmm, well, why don't I just go back into the world? It's like that was a totally ridiculous thought because I knew I could not take the step back. And I knew, uh, two things always came to me. Um, I wouldn't get dropped on my head and I would get everything I needed for the healing of my mind. And those two things always stayed with me through every step of the way. And so it was like the mind when I came also was always looking for a plan B. <laughs> because all of a sudden I realized I had taken all these steps and it was like, ah, what am I doing? <laughs> and um, so in watching the mind and seeing that, as Suzanne was saying, I had one foot on one side of the fence and the other foot on the other side of the fence and I stayed there for a while. Um, but it, it, it got really painful there. Uh, it got so painful that <laughs> uh, either I was going to check off the planet or I was going to put my left foot on the right side of the fence. And so it was just a choice. Um, and I, I can't tell you how uh, grateful I am for my brother's uh, devotion. Um, because even though they were mirrors to show me what was in my mind, and um, I always trusted their devotion, um, just the way things have transpired. And I really got to see that I pretty much hated everyone, which is kind of startling to say, hear myself say that, but I really have to be honest because the first uh, I was joining with was Lisa, and I could pick all kinds of grievances out. And then I would join with someone else, and then I could see all kinds of grievances with this one that I was joining with. My mind was full of grievances. So my mind was so undisciplined. I thought I was watching my mind, right? But it was really so undisciplined that when I started joining with my brother, I started just to see how um, how much I really needed to watch my mind and to see these thoughts. And, um, and for the longest time, I was exposing to make real instead of to heal because I wanted to be right. And, and then I realized, oh my God, I'm just yapping my mouth just to prove something's real outside of myself. And, and so, you know, it took a while to settle into really mind watching. The mind was so used to wandering, but then it reached a point where I was so excited to watch my mind because it, it was like when I could see the grievance thought and take it off of my brother and set my captive free um, uh, and, and really looked at my own thoughts and my own beliefs, um, uh, it was very liberating, and that's when uh, the bubbles, the, the little memory bubbles started to arise. Uh, the memories of past, the memories of, you know, whatever you want to say, victimhood or victimizer, or, you know, the, uh, the, um, the angry person, the resentful person, whatever it is, you know. And so I was just watching my thoughts and I was thrilled to watch my thoughts after a while and really see what the belief was and really go, oh, please, God, just take this from me. Just, just take this from me. And so I worked with that for a while and then uh, the self-concept started really um, 
I started realizing the self-concept that Lila had built. And I was having some mystical experiences at that time where I was seeing the body moving through the, the landscape. And um, it was like I could I was watching myself from a distance, just watching myself, watching myself from a distance. So I knew there was something greater, some, something greater, but I still had a lot of rebellion and retaliation and um, sheer defiance, really, I have to say, you know. So, um, and that was in a very short time that I was here. I got to see that much stuff in my mind. So when I came here, um, I knew that it was a total immersion into my mind and a fast track, if you want to say, for the healing of my mind. And uh, I was really thrilled about that. And so I started to experience, you know, um, uh, more distance from these thoughts and it started to loosen but it was like super glue almost I was so addicted to them and then um, yeah I don't know how how much to to share and what's most helpful so I'm just always ask for a spirit to guide um, but I I did reach a point where when I saw the sheer defiance, you know, all I really wanted was to, to love and to be loved. And when I saw that sheer defiance, it was like stone. Um, and actually during that time, I was carrying a lot of stones building the love nest out there. Uh, for weeks I was carrying stones and it was very symbolic of this defiance against God. Um, you know, uh, that all that really needed to be let go of. And I had no idea it was really there, uh, you know, because really I wanted the truth. I wanted to know myself in truth, but I had no idea this, this defiance and rebellion and retaliation was there. And so I went through a very deep healing with that, and I, I went through a lot of crying stages because I could see my arrogance and I could see this the softness of the heart. And uh, um, I, one of my projects was the campground uh, at that time. I don't know what came first. Time is kind of collapsing so much in my mind. But uh, when that project came in, it was, uh, uh, it was guided that I was going to lead that project. And I had a team. Uh, of 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 two folks, uh, three folks that were working very closely with me, and uh, they seemed to reflect back to my mind a lot of control and wanting to do things their way. And uh, you know, it was like, wow, what do I do with this? <laughs> Just watch my mind and see that's been my control playing out and boy that feels really like crap and I could see that there's no inclusiveness with my brother in that and so that was a trip <laughs> just watching my mind through putting the uh, going through the steps of putting the campground in it was like um, oh, uh, there was a lot of uh, seeming projections coming at me that I was full of minutia and um, a control freak and uh, you know um, so it was really interesting I I watched the self-concept uh, uh, get bombarded and I had so much pride I saw the pride underneath all that and I went oh my god you know my ego is <laughs> really bruised here <laughs> And then it was like, after some time, it was like, okay, hit me with your best shot, just fire away and let it go. And during that project, I was watching myself disappear, actually, um, which was really a beautiful thing. Uh, I had some fear about it, but after I saw such um, control and how it didn't leave an open door for my brother, I... I um, I just wanted the self-concept to really go then because I, uh, 
I really so much wanted to join and wanted to experience that love. And, uh, and so after that project, um, uh, the cabin came in and I got snowed in for a time. And, six uh, feet of snow. <laughs> yeah, six feet of snow down there. And um, so it was just me, my mind. I was with my mind for the whole season of the winter. And I realized that, you know, you can go on hermitage uh, and you can really stay very busy and distracted. Or you can really choose to be with God. And so I saw how distracted I could be even in six feet of snow in a secluded cabin. Um, so I decided to surrender. And <laughs> during the surrender, it was, uh, it was, I can't even tell you. Um, yeah, it was, uh, I can't even put it into words. But I saw, I started having, you know, mystical experiences and my mind started opening and I started, you know, um, really communing with the spirit more and I thought, oh my God, is this what I've been blocking all along? And it was like, yeah, wow, look what's here. And all of a sudden, you know, the springtime, all these birds were showing up. They were red birds, they were mauve birds, they were purple birds, they were yellow birds. I'm going, I've never seen this before. It's like I started seeing things that I never saw before. And it was like, um, wow. And um, so, you know, I have to say that everyone that had joined me in their deep devotion are part of my healing, everyone because I realize now that there really is nothing outside of my mind and that everything is the landscape of my mind and this is it. And um, I choose to accept the gift that everyone offers me. Sometimes, and the gift is always for the healing of my mind, right? It's to see where I desire to come out of this state of undefined peace and contentment and pick a specific thing out on form to peck at, like the bird, you know, to, to bite into, to gnaw and to chew on. It's like, oh my God, it feels so terrible after being open and expanded and you know you just don't want it. it's like oh yuck <gasps> let's let let's let's just lift that up let me let that go and so um yeah i still move through um and, and i don't know how long i've i've been here it's been maybe three and a half years or four years or something like that. I, I don't really know, but um, uh, I can say that I live in a, a, a place of contentment most of the time and, and peace. And sometimes I do see things that seem to upset me, but I know it's just because there's something that I'm choosing to be upset by. And so I can pull it, I, can, I know that the spirit has been bestowed in the mind and that I know that spirit has the power to forgive. And I know that when I do that, I'm released from the jail that I would have trapped my mind in by keeping hold of whatever that sticking point might have been seeming outside my mind. So, um, yeah, it's been a glorious journey, the greatest journey ever. It's so exhilarating and exciting. And, and I've been practicing really about a year ago. Um, uh, the guidance came through David to undefined, prayerful, and guided. And as soon as I heard that, it was like, yes! And so I vowed to Yes, Lord, I want 
my mind to be undefined, prayerful, guided, and collaborative. And so then Strawberry dropped in, and it was like, yes, I had a tickle for Strawberry. And then people would come up to me and say, oh, Lila's responsible for Strawberry. And I'd go, oh, no, I can't take on the responsibility, but I can tell you I have a tickle, and I'll follow the inspiration through. Because I found as soon as I put on the responsibility cap, it jailed my mind to all the inspiration. And so the whole time during Strawberry, I just got to practice staying in the undefined, prayerful, guide it, and collaborating with all my brothers. And I heard that um, Strawberry is here, watch it appear. And I went, what? And, and, and that's really how Strawberry came about. Um, I, I just stayed undefined. I joined, I prayerful and guide it. I joined with everyone that was showing up. And we, j we didn't run to or run from anything. We just allowed everything to drop in, all the inspiration. And then it became very obvious what it was. And I remember walking out the door of the cabin and strawberry was happening. And I went, oh, wow. And you know, sometimes during that, the thoughts wanted to come in about, oh, I, I should be responsible, I should watch, I should, well, oh, yeah, no, uh uh, it put me in jail immediately. I said, no, let me surrender that. And, and then I would think about, oh, the outcome and the folks coming. No, I can't even think about that. I just have to trust. So it was a deep walk of trust and a beautiful experiment for my mind to witness that life can really be lived easily and simply. And this is from a person that used to do everything the hard way. And so it's a delight for my mind to know and that the spirit is in the mind and we can trust the spirit. And when we commune with the spirit, the spirit guides the way. And I, I'm really just starting to come out of a sort of the cocoon. Um, and I have seen my mind um, wanting to filter what spirituality should look like. And I went, oh, yuck. And, and so I'm allowing myself in this time to just be unfiltered and let it come out the way it comes out and let it look the way it looks. And it feels very liberating just to not have filtering thoughts and trust that all things work together for the good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.